Hi guys, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Tavang. I am a geologist, but I'm passionate about all things careers. Today we're going to be talking about the first, second and third industrial revolution to better understand how the fourth one will affect your current and future career choices. First and foremost, an industrial revolution refers to the technological, socio-economic and cultural changes that take place within a society to propel it forward, economically. Bear with me. Now the first industrial revolution can be thought of as the move from rural to urban. This happened in the late 1700s to early 1800s in Britain. It can also be thought of as the transition from hand production and agriculture to industry and machine production. So yes, in the South African context, we definitely have areas that fall into different regions of industrial revolutions. And yes, a lot of them are still waiting on the first one. Now I mentioned three main stages that you should pay attention to when it comes to industrial revolutions. Technology, socio-economic changes, as well as cultural changes. From a technology perspective, the first industrial revolution resulted in the use of new materials like iron and steel. Well, new materials, if you consider that things like iron have always been there, we were just not mining it. We also had new energy sources like fuel, coal, steam engines, electricity and petroleum to name some. With these new sources came new machines that could lead to more production with less human energy. Factories became a thing, which meant a labor force where people had specialized roles. Changes also occurred in transportation and communication. This particular change you'll see evolve in every industrial revolution. From a socio-economic and cultural perspective, more food production meant more people were fed. If, like me, you were a small man, you could learn to operate a machine, and then the size disadvantage didn't exist anymore. And that is where the phrase, size doesn't matter, came from. I'm kidding, of course it does. The second industrial revolution is also known as the technological revolution. This was in the late 19th century and early 20th century. By the way, the 20th century refers to the 1900s, while the 19th century refers to the 1800s. Just in case, like me, you get easily confused. Here we are talking about the advancements of manufacturing and production technologies. These advancements were made possible by the wider adoption of railroad networks, gas and water supply, sewage systems, and of course, the telegram, which is like the ancestor of the SMS. The rail system and the telegram made the movement of people and ideas a lot easier. So you can think of this as the first stage of globalization, or the first example of globalization. From the first to the second revolution, we moved from factory to automatic factory, where some of the work became mechanized. Thanks to computing advancements, it, also, it was also around this time that ownership of a company included stocks or shares. And then in 1914, a huge blow was dealt to industrialization as the rest of the world was otherwise occupied with the First World War. By the way, read up on that too, I find it particularly interesting. The third industrial revolution is also known as the digital revolution and this took place in the late 20th century after the Second World War. This was the move from the technology we've touched on to digital technology. This was mainly driven by computing and communication technology. This era is also thought of as the beginning of the information age. Think of this as the point where new communication technologies met new energy sources and using these communication technologies we are able to manage the more complex civilizations. Now I will take a page from Jeremy Rifkin and simplify the third industrial revolution into five main pillars. However, disclaimer alert, these five pillars are quite aspirational and quite a few of them, when you hear them, will sound like we're not quite there yet. The first pillar, shifting to renewable energy like solar, wind, hydro, geothermal, etc. The second pillar, converting buildings into power plants. With this, we are able to build buildings taking into account the available renewable energy and these buildings create their own energy. So think of Apple's headquarters. That's a prime example. The third pillar is hydrogen and other energy storage technology. Unlike batteries and water pumps, hydrogen is the universal medium that stores all forms of renewable energy. Now, those of you that are interested in technology will have heard about hydrogen energy and hydrogen cars, which are currently in production. Uh, but again, the magnitude to which they're produced is not quite where it should be. The fourth pillar is smart grid technology. Now this also refers to me as an individual being able to produce enough energy to be able to share with other people. Now in some first world countries, um, you find people that use solar power but produce so much power that they are able to disperse it to other members of their communities and then they are able to use it in their households. 
The fifth pillar refers to transitioning the transport fleet to electric. So think of electric cars or the car train as an example. So there you have it. The first industrial revolution used water and steam to mechanize. The second industrial revolution used electrical power to mechanize. The third industrial revolution used electrics and information technology to automate production. Now the fourth industrial revolution will look to take over from the third one and amplify what's been achieved, basically blurring the lines between physical, digital and biological spheres. But what makes the fourth industrial revolution different from the third? Well, a few things. One of them is speed. We have never as a human race progressed this quickly through technology. Secondly, connectedness. Through these little devices, we have access to information, processing power, storage, and all of this is accessible to all. Well, to most. Well, to some, but never this many people before in history. With the fourth industrial revolution, there's a lot of technology that we can look forward to. And this includes artificial intelligence, robotics, the internet of things, autonomous vehicles, 3D printing, nanotechnology, biotechnology, material science, energy storage, and quantum computing. Now that is a mouthful, and I can't break down each and every single element right now, but the good news is that I will be doing a video that's looking specifically at the fourth industrial revolution. Now this revolution has the potential to mean greater revenue for a multitude of people, but they must have access to this digital world. With this device, I'm able to listen to my music, watch a movie, order a cab, order food, book accommodation when I travel, book travel, and a multitude of other things. But the access is limited. Not all of us have this. Also important to mention is that this revolution is a revolution in progress. So some of the things I'm speaking about for the fourth industrial revolution have not yet come to pass. But you should also pay attention to that a lot of countries that are in the fourth industrial revolution have made the transition from the first one to the second one to the third one, which has put in place the facilities required to be able to move to the fourth one. If you do not have those facilities in place, you run the risk of falling behind and increasing the global inequality that already exists. That's all for this chat guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I would love to get your take on this. Where do you think we fall as African countries on, you know, the spectrum of first to fourth industrial revolution? Uh, do you think there's anything we should be doing, we can be doing? Should we be looking to get straight to fourth? Um, or should we be taking it on a stage by stage basis to try and get to the ultimate level? Um, I would love to get your opinion. So please leave that below in the comments.